Out of curiosity, when you go through your kid's room, and I'm talking teenager younger, and the things that you find, what is it that you find? Let us know on the His Radio open mic. That's on the My His Radio app. You see the open mic right there. You can record it whatever you want on the open mic. But this one mom started sharing some things on her on her feed of the things that she found in her kid's room. I'll name a couple of items. Spoons. That doesn't sound unusual. Mm-mm. Tabasco sauce bottles. A pill bottle of somebody that's not even in their family, mom's perfume, a couple of dad's broken sunglasses, uh, um, grandpa's golf club, several more things that mom just randomly found in her daughter's room. Yeah, I don't think all of these are that crazy to find, like especially the spoons. If I... I could probably outfit four or five families and utensils with what I find in my boys' bedrooms. Um, Once, and I won't say which child, I have three, in the bottom drawer of said child, there was a bowl of ice cream that had melted and basically petrified. (laughs) I so want to guess which one this is because she's got four kids. You go ahead and you guess, but I will not confirm nor deny. This one's not in the house. Again, will not confirm nor deny. Uh, I got it. I nailed it. I know. I know. Because she's got two that are still in the house, but the one she's talking about is not in the house. That is true. That uh-huh. part is true. That part is true. Uh-huh. Um, so anyway, yeah, I found that in the bottom drawer of of unsaid child. Unsaid child. Yes. Which it is was the one chocolate. that does not live in the house. No, that's what Rob says. That is not a confirmation nor a denial uh-huh. from Miss Liz. <laughs> it was chocolate ice cream. It was disgusting. Uh-huh. The spoon stuck to it. I pulled up the spoon. Here came the bowl. Not oh <laughs> stuck to the bowl? The spoon was stuck to the bowl. I told oh, you it was petrified. Great. That is disgusting. great. Disgusting. That is great. Because God has kids. I can only imagine what he finds in their rooms. One that surprised me, and this was at our other house before the one we're in now. We hadn't been there very long. I was putting some things in my daughter's closet and helping her get her room set up. And I noticed something on the shelf in her closet, and it was the retainer from the previous owner. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh. I never ever thought I would find that. Here's an open mic that came in through the My His Radio app. My daughter is six years old, and I like to go through her room whenever she's not home and clean it out because if she's home, I'm not allowed to get rid of anything. Um, so it's not so much crazy things that I find in her room as it is little pieces of toys and things that you have no clue what it goes to. And she's a little artist, and so she has all her masterpieces all over her room that I'm not allowed to get rid of. Little scraps of paper that mean the world to her are everywhere. She's artistic. (laughs) She's creative. Exactly, and so it's not going to be neat. Yeah. (laughs) Right? Um, Elizabeth texted 800-447-7234. She said, here's what I found. Moldy pizza box. And the moldy pizza crust in the closet. <laughs> this is a boy. I would think, but it could yeah. be a girl. Don't even think. Okay, Leslie, here, I love this. Empty shredded cheese bags. She said, My youngest has always loved cheese. When she was about five years old, she would sneak the entire bag of shredded cheese into her room and then eat them in her bed. <laughs> so there would be cheese all over her bed. I can just see her sitting in there with her little with her little blankies up, you know, around her chin. She's like, "I love my cheese." Got my shredded cheese. Yeah, I'm all over the place. Mm-mm. At least it wasn't tacos. <laughs> <laughs> right here is Stephanie at eight hundred four four seven seven two three four. What about you, Stephanie? What's going on there? My child's room is so messy that I could probably take pieces from her room and re-gift them to her, and she would think it was something new. Why do you think that is? It's one of those things where I can tell her to clean her room. She'll go in her room and kind of just sit in different places and pretend that she cleaned. But in her mind, if she has a path around her bed, then it's clean. Why am I so 
why am I such a mean mom? Why do I need her to clean more? But in her defense, I was like that too. So <laughs> so we just got this open mic in from the My His radio app. Let's check it out. My sixth grader's room is so messy. It's so toxic that when Mr. Clean walks in, hair starts growing from the top of his head. <laughs> That's okay, something. That- Toxic room. Things you find in your kids' rooms. It's surprising at times at 800 447 7234. Yeah, and Jonathan texted that number and said, okay, our kids are not allowed to bring food into the room. So what we have found has been rocks, mulch, sticks, keys that don't belong to us. <laughs> he could write a book from everything they have found in the room. Here's what Charla found. Okay. An entire block of Parmesan cheese under the bed with multiple bite marks out of it. She said, our three-year-old has always loved the hard white cheeses and sneaks the most expensive blocks of cheese out of the refrigerator and ends up eating the entire block. Get out. Yeah. Really? Uh Uh-huh. I didn't know Parmesan cheese came in a block. Oh, yeah. If you want it, like, freshly grated, oh, we do that a lot, you take it off the hard block, and, yeah, you just grate it. When it when you get it out of the shaker, that's, that's like, pulverized. Yeah, but, but that's the best. It tastes so good out of the shaker. Oh, that is so not the best. No, no, sir. No, no. Yeah, yes, 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 ma'am. No, no, sir. <laughs> yes, yes, ma'am. So Kristen said, I think it's time for something to be cooked and brought to Rob. And bring some fresh Parmesan cheese to shave on top of it so he can get a taste and see the difference. She said, LOL, oh, Rob, oh, my. I'm so sorry. <laughs> well, Scott evidently agrees. Yeah, the, the fresh shaved hits harder. It's it's a different flavor. I like both of them. But you got to try the fresh grated shaved every so often. So I don't cat- know. I, you know, I now I realize that I guess I've had some of this Parmesan cheese. It's not the same as out of the grater. I mean, out of the out of the shaker. No, you're it's, right. It's not the same. There's just something that's just, I don't know, delicate. delicate. They both have their strong suits. They're, they're both, you know, have their purpose. You mean, I mean fake? No. no I okay. It's so great. It's beautiful. I mean, you just shake it out and you cover your spaghetti or <laughs> your pizza with it, and it's wonderful. Well, Kat said, okay, it's the greatest, the shaved parmesan cheese best on spaghetti and pizza but here's what she does with it puts it on garlic bread i, so, I guess i can see that i've never i've never taken the shaker to garlic bread no, but if no. i do it with pizza why not the garlic bread because that's you... that's kind of parmesan cheese around in the little plastic container oh my goodness no oh here's what yeah. i do i take potatoes like little new potatoes and i'll shave the parmesan cheese off the block Put a little olive oil on it, salt, pepper, garlic. Put it in the air fryer. Oh, girl. Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's just not the. I get that stuff in the restaurant, and I'm like, it's just not. It's not the same. It, no, it's, it's not the same. Shaker. Out of the shaker. Out of the shaker. That's the best of, of both worlds. Oh my goodness. Here's an open mic that just came in through the My His Radio app. Rob. You have never had Parmesan cheese until you've had Parmesan Reggiano. I promise you, your next spaghetti night, get a block of that and grate it on top of your spaghetti, and you will think you've won a million bucks. (laughs) Really? Yes, sir. That mix, those two cheeses together, yes. Really? Scott's like agreeing with this guy. Yes, I'd forgotten about that. Oh, it's good. Yes. Parmigiano Reggiano. you got to yeah. say it that way, too. Parmigiano Reggiano. Right, They're you moving their hands, by the yes. Hand up. <laughs> so Georgia, Georgia is kind of in your camp, Rob. What she said is, we put Parmesan cheese on our popcorn, and it's the one out of the shaker. Yeah, I've never tried that. That does sound delicious. Okay, y'all try that. Um, Let's see. Cindy <laughs> said, Rob, you're so wrong. The block <laughs> Italian cheese is more flavorful and natural, no preservatives. And here's the stamp of approval. She said, my Italian grandmother would agree with me. Well, they're in Italy. And she's going to say it just like Scott and I said it. Parmigiano Reggiano. <laughs> Robin Liz, his morning crew.
Ooh, I love when you go to a restaurant and you order a really good salad. It's one of my favorite things. It's Robin Liz in the morning, his radio. I was reading about this cat, and this cat likes sad salads as well. I don't know how they discovered it, but this cat will not eat its main course. I'm talking about a cat, a feline, meow. This cat will not eat its main course unless there's a side salad served. This makes no sense to me. <laughs> Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I'm telling you. I've heard of bougie cats before, but this one takes the cake. Oh, I'm so sorry, garçon. I cannot have my meal. Hidden Valley Ranch. <laughs> oh, I doubt it. Is I it bet it's a balsamic dip? vinaigrette. Mm -mm, no, I'm thinking Hidden Valley. Hidden no, Valley. That, that Check cat's this a little out. more bougie than that. Scott's cat is really specific on how it eats. Mm? No side salad, but our cats, we've got two, will only, and I'm serious, they will only eat the exact middle food in the bowl. So there's food around the edges. They won't touch it, but it has to be right in the center. And they will nibble out the entire portion of the middle and then look at me like I'm starving with food all the way around the other parts of the bowl. So what I feel like you need to do, Scott, is buy a bowl that ha is really high on the sides so that as they eat the middle, what's on the sides just naturally oh, yeah. right, let gravity right take over and it, it goes to the middle. It's so funny. They just look at me like, when are you going to feed me? And I'm looking at the bowl. It's like it's full of food, but just not in the middle. I don't know if anybody else has to deal with that or not. Rob and Liz, his morning crew. Live like a toddler if you want less stress in your life. So I saw this and I thought, you know what? 100% totally into this. Here's a couple of things that we should do if we want to live like a, a toddler. First of all, hug people hug more if somebody reaches out to give you a hug don't stiffen up like just go for the gusto and hug another one snuggle with a blankie like a lovey my granddaughter has a lovey and when she gets tired or she gets anxious or whatever she will pick up her lovey and just kind of snuggle it maybe even just rub it a little bit and it makes her feel better and i this thought brand name lovey no, no. It's just what babies call their, their special blankies or, okay. yeah. Um, dance and sing, which I'm all about that all the time. The more you can dance and sing. We went to a restaurant over the weekend, and the, the woman working at the cash register just singing her little heart out. She mm. was like she was on American Idol or something. She was just singing. And I thought, you know what? Yes. And then another one is don't hold back the tears. If you feel like you need to cry let it out feel better about it and let it out a good cry a good cry it 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 helps your soul it really does like it just gets all that nastiness out that you're trying to hold in just let it out hmm. i think i'm out on all these why i'm not gonna dance and sing in front of people listen i saw a couple of instagrams of middle-aged people dancing <laughs> and i was convinced not to do that well, if somebody has a video camera or your their phone, just, you know, shut it down. Don't Listen, let that happen. I saw what it looked like, and I'm like, there's no way I'm going to do that to people. But so toddlers, I'm not going to dance like that. No. No, toddlers don't worry about it. Toddlers could not care less this if anybody's watching. <laughs> okay. Rob and Liz, his morning crew. When they met each other, it was like love at first sight. They've been married forever. They have quite a few kids, grandkids, great grandkids, because she's a hundred now and he's a hundred and one. Right. And they met on a train way back, like 1944. They met on a train and they just happened that uh, Bobby sat beside Marsden on this train and he knew immediately. He wanted to take her out, but all he knew was her first name. So he had to track her down, and cause he was like in the in the army or the navy at the time, and uh, he was able to. They went on their first date, and they have been in love ever since. I love how the meeting took place because it was a packed train. The conductor tapped Bobby on the shoulder and said, "Dude," however they said it back in 1944. Yeah, probably dude. not dude, but sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's a young man. There you go. You please surrender your seat for this young lady. That was his wife. 
Yeah, his future wife. I don't know if he would have noticed her. If she she probably would have passed right on by. It was a packed train. I don't know. Like it was just meant to be, and she was brought into his life, and he was like, "Hey, girl, hey." Rob and Liz, his morning crew. So John was actually probably a little excited. You know, he had a package from Amazon, shows up on the the front porch, and he goes out and he checks. He's like, okay, well, this is addressed to somebody else. His name is Daniel. But he opened it because he's like, we ha- it's the right address, but the wrong name. So it was like all these screws. He said, I didn't order this. I don't know. He got in touch with the guy whose name was on the package. That guy said... I didn't order any screws. I don't know what that is. So, yeah, the next couple of days, John gets more packages. He even got a sofa. He got a sofa at one point, got charged for it. Yes. So Amazon keeps billing him, keeps sending him packages. He's gotten probably about 100 packages so far. Can't get it to stop. He and his wife have sent back some of the packages. You know, some of them they've probably taken to Kohl's because you can do returns that way. He's like, I'm not ordering anything. Like, here's here's my thing for John and his wife. Go ahead and take your credit debit card information out of Amazon, close the account, and maybe they'll stop sending you stuff and billing you for it. Right. I hear... I don't know how accurate this is, but I hear that these kind of things are a scam. Sometimes they can be a scam because, and so I don't want to speak out of turn because I don't know everything about it, but somebody has said that this originated with Amazon trying to get reviews, better reviews for some of their things. Not that Amazon, the company, but some of the, the sellers that sell through Amazon are doing this to get more reviews on their items. And I'm thinking, how do you well, get not... a review off of something you don't want? Right? You get it in the mail. You're not going to go on and go, well, I didn't order this, nor did I pay for it, but five <laughs> stars. Robin Liz, his morning crew. All she wanted was some talking tacos. That's the name of the place that oh. the tacos. Talking tacos. I think because of what happens to you after you eat them. They start talking. (laughs) So here's the thing. It's a door dash. She opens up. She lives in like this apartment. She opens up and in the hallway of the apartment, she sees raccoons just a few feet away. She looks down. Her talking tacos are ripped into and gone. These three raccoons, which she now has on her phone because she pulled out her phone and started recording. (laughs) Who else doesn't? Um, saw all her tacos gone so she had to capture the moment my my biggest issue with this whole thing is they were inside her apartment building it's not like her apartment had a door on the outside they actually came in came up the stairs i think they just followed the smell and they were like yes and so she said once they started hissing at her she's like yeah, you can have the carne asada. Like, you you can have everything that's in that bag because I'm out. Rob and Liz, his morning crew. So this one lady made a really stark revelation about names of people. And this is what she posted the other day. The other day, my daughter told me the name Ashley or Amanda or my name is Amber are like old people names. And I never thought about it this way. But she's like, yeah, my teacher's names are like Miss Erica, Miss Samantha. There's Amanda's and Ashley's. And she's like, those are just old people names. Whereas like young people names like my daughter is Scarlett. There's Charlotte's. There's Olivia. There's Penelope's. There's Isabella's. There's Bella's. There's Ella's. Those are young people names. Huh. I don't want to tell my daughter. That Amanda is an old person's name. My niece is Amber. So, yeah, I I hear you. Where is that coming from? These are old people names. It's like uh, Bertha and Gertrude back in my day. But at the same time, all of the names that she mentioned, Olivia, Penelope, Isabella, those are actually older names that have just come back around. So, daughter, pump your brakes a little bit. You've feel, got an old person name. Yeah, I feel like the, those are timeless names, though. They are, but they like the name Elizabeth. It's been around since the beginning, and they're just secular. You know, they go out for a while, they come back for a while, they go out. Mm-hmm. So, Amber, Ashley, Amanda, you'll all be relevant once again soon.